You know, the, the older I get, the more I feel like I've got to learn. I'm further behind than I was. Well, some of you remember, I used to have a, a thing on my desk, a sign that said, um, wish I was 16 again, then I knew everything. <laughs> and uh, I, I tell you what, I really, uh, <clears throat> as one that stands before people. Um, uh, my heart isn't to be a Bible school graduate some many years ago or a pastor or my heart is to know the Lord and to allow his nature and his spirit to be formed in me and that even limits how I pray when I share. And I always worry because I, in the sense of when I share because I, <clears throat> um, I don't want to communicate <clears throat> um, what he would want communicated. Now when I say that, I'm not talking about right content. I'm talking about that there are things of his heart. And we should take into consideration <laughs> those things all the time <laughs> if we love him. More so than we should take into ourselves a religious consideration of, well, I hope they get what I got. You know what I mean? And that's, that's really passing out from me. I mean, it really is. I, I, you know, I don't even know I got it yet, you know. <laughs> but we are on the way. I know that. You know, I know that we're on the path. Um, and in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, if you'll turn there or if, if you want to just hear me because I will read it. It's verse 5. We see the things, the, the, the very thing that I was trying to comment on just now. Uh, I'll read verse 5 and verse 9. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Okay? So there is this <clears throat> use of this word good pleasure, and, it, and it, it says according to the good pleasure of his will. It doesn't say according to the extremely important religious level that I am communicating to you, you must obey. Um, <clears throat> or any of that, these verses are speaking, uh, and we can read them that way, and I've in the past read them that way. We can read it just without any thought of his good pleasure, and this is just the will of God, so let's do it. Um, uh, you know, that wouldn't work in a marriage. And a lot of times it doesn't work with kids towards their parents, you know. This, this thing of, well, you know, uh, this, is, this is what you want, and so I'm just going to do it, you know. Um, I was just going to obey or whatever. Um, when something comes out of our heart for the Lord or even for one another, something special can happen, actually. Something special can happen because then it becomes issues of the heart and not issues of doctrine or issues of our denomination or issues of our personal bent in ministry, whether that be world evangelization, teaching children or uh, doing worship or whatever, which are all personal bents, um, which are fine, which are absolutely fine. but. There is, there is always one overriding thing that will be eternal because of the very nature of the gene that we talked about last, Gavin, the nature of the seed. The very nature of the seed is going to demand that we live by a certain spirit and gene and nature, <clears throat> and that will be towards one another or God, and that will be in any ministry it, it, it will be the heartbeat 
because it's the life, because it's the very life that he wanted us to be like. It was the likeness, not the job that he was looking for and that he wanted. So, um, the use of, of the term there in the scriptures of his good pleasure <clears throat> means that there was something he wanted to get out of it. And these scriptures in the New Testament are bearing that out. <clears throat> All right, let's see if I can move this and <clears throat> draw a little bit here. This is a variation of, an, of a chart I used a long time ago, but it's, it's different in certain ways. But we have over here, in the beginning, God. And there was this plan that went out from him that was in his heart that was because God doesn't operate off of just externals. He functions by being this thing that he wants has to have to has to be created in, into being or into likeness or into image. Anyway, it goes all the way down to the end and then we see that um, when, the, when the kingdom is given to Jesus then it says in Corinthians that he delivers it up to the Father and God will be all and in all. And so, so there was in the beginning, just God. I mean, that's all we're given. This before creation, anything. It's just God. You know. No buildings, no tech, <laughs> no all these things that seem so important to us. Just God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And a gene that they were made of. You could say their substance. All right? But then there's this explosion of creation, and all of this stuff comes out from God. But it all ends up going back into God. And the, um, so, so the, the real plan was that this would all go out and all of this would be filled with the things that he wanted to bless us with, do for us. But the core in there, this thrill, well, that's himself being formed in us. That's the eternal river that we find later throws, flows out of the throne of the Lamb, but then from there flows out of the New Jerusalem, which is described as the bride of the Lamb, the wife of the Lamb, right? Because he's seated in her, and when it, that river goes out, it brings healing to the nations and everything, but it's because there is a Lamb seated within her and enthroned, and enthroned. And this is, this is this thing, this, this lifeline, this thing that is eternal. And all of the things made, whatever, trees and whatever, and all of the creation, all of that is, is temporal. I mean, it's temporal. Everything that is going to ever continue to be something must find this what does the scripture say? There is a river that maketh glad the heart of God. You know? And to, we have to find that river that is ultimately his life flowing out of being enthroned in his bride. And there it brings forth. All right. 
Well, there was a problem. <laughs> there was a problem. Right off the bat, there was the fog. Okay. Right off the bat, there was the fog. <clears throat> and with the fog came chaos on several fronts. I mean, you can, you can throw Satan in here, and you can throw sin in here, and you can throw um, greed, and then you can start writing all this stuff, and you got all of those things. Um, but, it, but mixed in there, too, is, is all these threads. There's all these threads. It's just, uh, for example, why? Why, all the whys that ever existed. Well, why did God do this? Well, why is this? Why is that? So, so if you just put, you know, here's just one why going through here. And then, you know, if you put another one over here and, and all this. And then, um, you know, the, the what ifs. The what ifs are scary, you know, for us. Like, what if this did that? And, you know, and what if this? What if it goes this way? Whatever. And then you've got sickness, and, and then you've got um, divorce, and you know, on and on and on and on. And then you just got every everybody with, I need. You know? And then this person, I need. Do you think those lines ever cross? And if they cross, do you think they ever clash? Okay, well, let's just put everybody that not just is here on the earth now, but that has ever existed. <clears throat> and then there's the me focus. Well, me, you know. You know my Facebook page. <laughs> and my clothes or whatever. My way of doing things. And it's just, and all of this just, Every place that this touches, there's a clash. It's it, in in truth, in truth, it is chaos. It's Babylon. Yeah. It's chaos. In truth, it is. Now we we recognize that um, on on a smaller basis. If we just made this our life right here, <laughs> you know, you know. Not the whole world, but just our life with all the wants and needs and all this stuff. And, you know, and then, you know, remember, somewhere in here is Satan <laughs> and sin and all this other stuff, you know. And so, so it's, just, it's just chaos, and it's all based on this, you know, and this whole thing with, with me. My, the focus being on me is saying, and here it is, my good pleasure. Okay. Answer me this then. Do you believe God wants to bless you? Amen. And I don't think any of us disagree with that. I mean, we've all been blessed, right? I mean, my God. The amount of things he has done for us is innumerable. We don't even know. We can't know. You know, the, the scripture says you can't outgive God. One reason you can't is because we don't even know how much he's given to us constantly and taking care of so many things that we never knew about. <clears throat> but you see, he's done that in the midst of this soup of all of these crossing lines and all of this confusion and all of this, you know. So someone sits there and, and their child is, you know, their teenage child is hit by a car and dies and they've been a Christian their whole life and they've paid their tithes and they've gone to church. and you, We don't know that. We don't understand that. But if a person was there, somewhere in here, they would, the, the why would become huge. Why, Lord? Why did you allow this? And, and a, whole lot of, a whole lot of Christians could run and say, oh, I have an answer for that. But you know, I mean, do we really have an answer for everything? Are we omniscient? Do we really know everything? And, and yes, I, I, I mean, I have been a pastor for as long as I have, 
there are a lot of things that I can share and am expected to share and am expected to give answers to. But I don't know everything. And I have to put people in the Lord, in those nail-scarred hands all the time. Nail-scarred hands, not just hands of blessing, not just hands. Of, you realize that the hands that heal us when the, we feel the hand of the Lord upon us is a nail-scarred hand. See? Yeah. And it still has a scar. Well, Jesus, if you're victorious, you'd clean that right up, you know what I mean? Show the victory. And the book of Revelation shows him as a slaughtered lamb. That's the exact word used, a slaughtered lamb still on the throne. Not a slaughtered one who got up and got healed and looks gloriously but a lamb slain, and that's the ones that's around the throne worshiping him. Because there are things, there are mysteries of his heart that we have not pursued, and it gets more difficult in the chaos to pursue. But somewhere, our hearts must not just be the, the center of the universe like on Facebook or something to get everything that we want that makes us happy, but somehow can, can navigate all of the, the, the touching points that we face that are chaos on, on a certain front. But in reality, we're not, we're, we're looking in the wrong place. In reality, anything in this soup <laughs> is going to be in the wrong place. Maybe I got enough time for, well, let me just read Revelation 21 because it's almost time for this one to be done too. And it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. So there are two creations. And we, we say, okay, well, that's a, a future thing. But we also see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that it mentions that there are still, that are right now there are two creations. And it says, wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away, and the, and the true Greek there is they're passing away. Behold, all things are become new. There's the old creation and the new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. All right, look at this soup, look at this chaos, and tell me if all things are of God in there. Is it possible the devil could ever do anything? <laughs> could attack you? Yes! Can God use that? Yes, but does that mean it's of God? No, no God, God uses stuff all the time that's not of God. Me, you. <laughs> and graciously slow. So, amen. Graciously so. All right. So, we're going to come back and look at this chart on the next part. And who knows what. <laughs> I really tried to make this simple. Um, we're going to come back and look at it and just have a few thoughts concerning that. So let's go ahead and take another break. It'll be a short one, too.